Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon, and I just wanted to go over a few problems on the uh, Unit 5C homework. Um, so since we're in the statistics section, uh, our textbook actually comes with a really nice resource called StatCrunch, which helps do a lot of things. So uh, we'll just look at a few questions. Some of the earlier ones are just like basically writing down some definitions and things like that. So you can look those up in the textbook, but ones where you actually have to construct the table. In the lecture, I did one by hand, but since we have access to StatCrunch, we can... Uh, use that resource to do them. Uh, you can also do it in Excel as well if you're more comfortable with Excel. Um, but for number seven right here, they want us to construct uh, frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative frequency um, based on this raw data here. So what you can do is you can open this in StatCrunch. And let me tile the window so we can see both of these. Okay, so now we have all of our data copied into this column under variable one. So if you hit stat, and go down to tables. Uh, we can select the first option, frequency table, and there's a bunch of different statistics we have. Frequency, relative frequency, and then they also said cumulative frequency. So to highlight an additional item without losing uh, the other ones, you wanna hold down control on your keyboard and then select that as well, and then click compute. Oh, we also have to select the column for the data we're using. So select the column and then select the statistics you want and then click compute. And we have our table with all of our answers that we can just go ahead and type in. Um, so, you know, they're all right there. So three, uh, my relative frequency, it's listing it as a decimal here as a percentage. This would be 12.5 and the cumulative frequency is uh, three. So check, that's the first one. Let's go ahead and do the second one and then we'll move on after that. Um, so the relative or the frequency is eight. The relative frequency as a percentage is 33.3. .3. It says round to the nearest tenth, which is one decimal place, and the cumulative frequency is now 11. Okay, and then you just fill in the rest of the column that way. So um, that's a, a better way to do number seven. Uh, another one I want to point out, this really isn't using StatCrunch, but it did uh, come up in the lecture so if you look at nine, it says determine whether the following variable is qualitative or quantitative and explain why. So the responses of customers on a survey are used a scale from zero terrible to five fantastic. Now these are numerical values, but they're not actually measuring anything other than a customer's feeling. So for that reason, we're actually thinking of these numbers more as categories, right? Terrible, fantastic, the feelings associated to them. Um, so we would say this is qualitative because satisfaction is a subjective thing. So that's that one. I just wanted to alert you to that on number nine. The other ones are pretty, you know, straightforward, like daily snowfall and inches. This is gonna be a quantitative variable. Um, let's go ahead and look at some of the graphs on the end. I think I also wanted to look at uh, the later questions. Um, Ones like these, let's see if we can uh, reproduce this graph using StatCrunch. So they want us to make a bar graph. Um, I haven't tried using a bar graph on StatCrunch before, but it's probably not that difficult. So let's see, stat, is there a uh, control charts? Graph, let's look at graph, uh, bar graph with data, let's say. So, Let's just select both columns and see what happens. Compute. Okay, we get a bar graph. They're all frequency one, so that's not right. So it's showing two different graphs here. Not, not how we wanted to do it. So a bar graph. We have all the What if we do with summary maybe categories under beef producer and the count and the amount of beef and then we get our bar graph so we see we see how we can make the bar graph associated to that and then you can select the right answer after you've done that so that's helpful for creating a bar graph so that worked out um, it, there's other ones also with a pie chart I noticed so this one has a pie chart. Again, we can open this in StatCrunch and under the same heading we saw, um, under graph, we saw pie chart. So we go ahead and do that. Uh, let's try with summary again. 
So we've got the category as the number of children and the counts, the percentage, and then compute, and we get the lovely little uh, pie chart. So it looks very similar to this one B, just at a glance. Um, okay, so that was nice. Let's see if anything else we need to make. On 16, uh, again, we're just analyzing the graph. We don't have to make it. Um, here it's a histogram. Let's see if we can do the histogram. We can probably just do it as a bar graph and kind of get the right idea, but let's see if they have a histogram option. So graph, histogram. So the column, so the bins. So they're telling us the bins here. So 45 to 49, so let's try that. So we're gonna start at 45, and 45 to 49 um, is gonna be a, a width of five. So let's go ahead and compute that and see if it works. Yep, so we get our appropriate histogram. So let's see, maybe we can see which one it looks the most like. So, no, something, something's off because something's off. Let's try that again. So, stat or graph histogram, select the column. Oh, so it's not reading this as a count. So these are all of our counts. <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure how to do this. We could probably get the right thing, something similar again, by just kind of cheating and using a bar graph instead. The same way we did before, bar graph with summary. And then we get the category is the age and the count is the number of winners. And that'll give us the roughly the histogram. Again, they're not butted up to each other, but we get the same sort of, we, we get exactly the thing we want, and we can see that, um, so, this one, the D should be the correct answer, because we go one, two up, and then we have two at the same height, and then the next one, so just double checking that, we did D, so, I used the bar graph option, there's probably a way to get histogram work to work, but I'm just not exactly sure about that, uh, 17, um, similar, again, we've got a a bar graph here, so display the histogram. Oh, this is just part B to the question. Yeah, so just analyzing it. Um, so let's see if there's anything else on the last one. So this was 17, let's look at 18. Okay. Uh, this is making one of those line uh, graphs, which we did uh, using uh, Excel last time, but let's see if we can do it on StatCrunch. And then these are all the ones that we would need to use StatCrunch for in this homework. So let's go to graph again, and let's try, is there a line graph? A chart maybe? No. Scatter plot, multi-plot. Huh. Let's try scatter plot. So the x variable is going to be the year, and the y variable is admissions. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Okay, so this just has the dots. How do we connect them? Maybe there's a way to color points, grouping points, overlay polynomial, display points, and let's also do lines. Let's do both. Let's hit control and click lines and compute. So there we go. Now we have the line graph associated to it as well. Um, so it has two coming down. So it looks like A in my example. All right, so those are all the ones where basically you can use StatCrunch to make the graphs rather than using um, Excel or something like that. So uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, otherwise, that's it for the Unit 5C homework.